What up folks, Alex here. Now not too long ago, I showed you how to make this real simple, super basic subscribe button animation for your YouTube videos. And in this video, we're gonna expand on that slightly, and just add a little notification bell, animate it slightly, give it a little dingling, just to take that subscribe button to the next level. Now, if you didn't watch the previous video, make sure you watch that before watching this video because I fly through things just a little bit quicker in this video, so make sure you watch that one first. It's also really handy to have created your own subscribe button because then you'll be more familiar with some of the tools, but if you do want to just download it, you can do, the links are down in the description below. You can download the project, install it, and then you can grab a subscribe button from there instead. So, with that all out of the way, let's open DaVinci Resolve. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. Now before we actually get into it, there's a few additional files you'll need. The first one is this, which is just a simple Bell PNG. There's a link in the description below for this one. Now as you can see, I've got nothing on my timeline at the minute other than my sample clip. So we need to get the basic subscribe button on here before we do anything else. If you haven't created it yet, you can download my pack, again, link down in the description, and import it, and then you can grab yourself a sub button straight from there. So you need to make sure you're at this point, essentially, before we go any further. Once you're here, give that a click and then head into the Fusion tab. Now, what we want to do is to add our PNG over here, animate it the same as the sub button, but then also make it sort of do a little ring at the end. Now, the first thing you'll notice, this subscribe button is a little bit too big. It's taking up a little bit too much room. So we haven't got room for our bell here, so we just need to amend it slightly. So within your nodes down here, click on Transform. Go right to the beginning of this little timeline here of all your frames. And then in the inspector, under transform, you should see size. Now we've already got some keyframes set, so we've got our animations done. So you don't want to just change this as it is. Click on the keyframe here, which should be in red. You should be at zero. Click the one to the right, and it will take you to this first keyframe. And just reduce that. I'm going to go with 0.75 because that works well. Skip to the next keyframe, just using this little icon here. Just do the same thing, 0.75, and that's it. So all of our animation is still done, it's still set, it's still doing the same thing, it's just a little bit smaller. And now we can just use our center here, just to move it over to the left a little bit. We'll go with about 0.4, looks like it gives me enough room. So now we just need to add our bell. So come to the top here, and you should see Media Pool, top left, give that a click. And then go to your master or wherever you've put it in, you should see all of the normal files which you've imported into DaVinci Resolve. So we're just going to grab our PNG of the bell and drop it onto our nodes. Now we want to be able to make this bell any colour that we like, so there's a few additional things we need to do. Head into the effects library, and then tools, and then mask, and grab a bitmap and put that next to there. And we can connect those up. That will just turn this image, this PNG, into a bitmap, which you can then color any color you like. We're then going to grab a background node, which is this one right here for quick access. Put that down there and connect that up as well. And then last but not least, we're just going to grab a transform node, put that after the background and connect that up again right there. Now to link everything together, we need to use a merge node and it's going to go in between this merge node here and the transform node here. So we're just going to move the media out over a bit, transform over a little bit as well. We're going to grab a merge node, which is this one right here, and just drag it onto this line, like so. And then we can just connect our transform to the merge too. So now we've got our bell and our subscribe button all coming to our media out. If we click on the background node here, we can change the color of the bell to any color we like. So we're just going to make that white. And because our merge nodes are before this transform node, which is the main animation transform node. The animation affects the bow as well. So we don't need to reanimate anything there, which is perfect. We do need to resize it. So we're just gonna click on transform and we can start resizing things. So we're just gonna make this a little bit smaller and we're just gonna move it over here as well, like so. Now we also need to change the pivot. So the pivot is, if you do the angle, you can see it's revolving around the center. Because it's a bell, we actually want it to revolve around the little notch at the top so it looks like it's swinging. And you can affect the pivot using this little button here, dragging it up and down. Or if you see the little green X, if you give that a click and move that 
up to the top. Now, if we do our angle, it swings around that point instead. Now, because we've moved it, we just need to move it back down a little bit like so. And there we have it. So if we hit play, we've got our button and our bow popping up. So the last thing we need to do is just to animate the bow so it has a little swing to it. So this takes about 10 frames to pop in. So we're going to go to about 25 frames here. And then we're going to start to animate the bow. So with the transform two node selected, just come to the angle here and then add a keyframe. And we're just going to use this little red marker on our keyframes here, move forward just a couple of frames. We're going to go for about two or three. And then we're just going to add a tiny bit of left swing, move forward again, a couple of frames. We'll go for two and then just a tiny bit back the other way, go a little bit further this time and then come back. Whoops. You can see where we're going with this. We're just doing this bit of a swing back and forth just to make it look like our bow is ringing. And we're just going to start to bring it back down now. You're free to experiment with this. Do what you like with it. Have a play. Once you want to get back to, to as it was, just set that back to zero. Now if we hit play on that. We've got our bell, just having a little bit of a wiggle. Mess around with the keyframes to get it looking how you want it. You can use fewer keyframes, you can use more, you can do whatever you want with that. If we just head back to the edit tab, we can have a quick look. It pops up and then the bow just has a bit of a wiggle. And actually that doesn't look too bad at all. I'd be pretty happy to use that. But if you want to just make the animation a little bit smoother, you can do. So we're going to head back into Fusion. In the top right hand corner, click Spline. And then make sure that you tick the boxes next to transform two. So you should see this sort of up and down squiggly line. And then if you click this icon here, you can just zoom in a bit so you can see what you're doing. Now these are all the keyframes that we added. And as you can see, it moves to the left, the right, the left, the right. And we just want to smooth that out a little bit. So if we just click our mouse drag to select all of those keyframes, then you can either just hit this button down here or S on your keyboard and it'll just smooth them all out so it's not so jarring. So now if we hit play, the bow looks a little bit something like that instead. And then while you're in the spline tool, if you just untick your transform two ticks here, so you've got nothing there, tick transform one, and we're just gonna hit that key again, just to scale everything. You can then do the same thing for these keyframes. These are the keyframes that animate the zoom in, and the zoom out. Now again, they don't look too bad linear at all, but if you want to animate them, you can. Just give them a click and smooth them out. If, quick tip for you, you end up doing this, so you smooth them out and this one goes a bit crazy, just set that one to be level and then hold the control key while you adjust this one to independently adjust this side without affecting the other side. Head back to the edit tab, if we hit play, And there you go. So now you've got your subscriber button made, you want to be able to use it on all of your different projects. Well, usually what you can do is add a fusion composition to a power bin, but because we're using an external file, i.e. that PNG, it doesn't quite work in the same way. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. So what I'm going to show you now is how to actually export this fusion composition as a transparent video file, which you can then drop onto any project. So the easiest way I find, I'm just going to delete everything else off my timeline. So the only thing I've got here is my fusion composition. Now, as you can see, I've already resized it as well. So it's really small. I'm just going to reset that so it takes up the whole screen. So I'm just going to go into my inspector and just reset my transform here. So I've got it full screen like so. Perfect. And then we're just going to head to the deliver tab. And then within the deliver tab, go to custom. And then you need to change render from single clip to individual clips. Now, the only thing I've got on my timeline is my fusion composition. So I don't need to select anything because that's the only thing that's there to render. I'm going to give it a name and just call it sub with bell. Save it to a location, do everything as normal. And then within the format, make sure you're on QuickTime and then change the codec to DNXHR. And then just underneath that, you've got this button here, export alpha. Alpha is the transparency, the, the 
what appears as black here but is actually completely clear. Give that a click and then you can add to a render queue, render it off as normal and then if we import that file back into DaVinci Resolve, drop it on my timeline above a clip and we can see that it's completely transparent. I can then resize it as I need to. It's just a video clip so it can go in power bins, it can go in any sort of bin ready to use for any projects in the future. And that's it. I hope it was useful. If it was, thumbs up, comments or feedback or anything else you'd like to see down in the comments below. Don't forget to bing, subscribe if you're new around here and make sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists for more DaVinci Resolve content. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, that hair's on my face. No.